Well, 2019 is nearly done, which is a weird thought because next year is going to be 2020 where we see a little bit more clearly, I believe, that year. I thought I was going to sneeze. I'm sorry. Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a reaction to my really bad pun. No, joke. I actually really liked it. And I'm ready for all those lovely puns. Um, I'm seeing them in our future. Yay, exactly. So we are going to take a second to look back on the year that was 2019 and chat about all things watching. Uh, so the top three movies and TV shows of 2019 that we liked, plus we'll throw in some honorable mentions because you're going to give us your list anyway in the comments, so we may as well try and get as much happening in this list as possible. But we're going to get three. Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Challenge accepted. Starting with movies or TV? Let's do a TV. Let's do it. TV. What right. to watch. 2019 standouts. Let's kick it off with honorable mentions. Okay. Because we both were like, ah, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel was such a good show. Even if you joined, you know, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel family late, I feel like you still get the full effect of like, whoa, this is so cool. Amy Sherman Palladino has always been fantastic. I love her work with Gilmore Girls, obviously. I've seen a little bit of Bunheads as well. Mm -hmm. So I really love her and her hats. I just think that this is a great cast, great writing, super snazzy, strong females. I'm about it. It looks beautiful as well. Anything oh. that's in like a timepiece that does an amazing job, which I'll be talking about more on this list, I'm all about it. So, and I think what's really hard with a lot of seasons is to keep that momentum going. Yeah. And they manage to do it every single time. To mix it up and not not make it so like, well, we know what's going to happen. Same, same. I know. And yeah. you would think that with the premise being a woman decides to do uh, stand up in the 1950s. It's like, where do you go from there? They, yeah. they figure it out. And there's something about watching Midge perform every single time that I just get a rush out of it. And I'm like, yeah. you can do this. And I laugh, you know, at all times, pretty much, because she's funny. She's so good. And I love that we get to see that change within her when so she realizes that. That's our honorable mentions, but let's go with number three for both of us. What is your number three movie? Mm. A TV show. Yeah, my number three TV show would have to be Stranger Things season three. I really liked it. Yeah. I thought it was great. I would yeah. put it on my list, but you beat me to it. So. Yeah, I did. I love the, the, the costumes that we also got out of it. Scoops my the legs, baby. Oh. Mm. oh. Super Australian. He's Australian. Dacre Montgomery? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Dacre. Really? Yeah, he's Aussie. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw one interview and I was like, that's a different accent. Mm -hmm. We have to do that a lot. KJ Apa, he's Kiwi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. when they do their shows, they have flawless American accents. Yeah. And then the Aussies and the Kiwis, all of a sudden when they do their interviews and they sound like this, everyone's like, you took another one of our jobs. <laughs> and to that it's I say, fine. yes, yes, we did. You're taking over. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, this season, especially after we lost Bob, Spoiler oh. alert, um, from last season was so heartbreaking, mm. but we got to see Eleven really grow up. This is what's interesting. Hormones are flowing in this season, which we didn't get before. And Paul Will just wants to play D&D. &D. <laughs> oh, I know. That's Will so has been my adoptive son throughout this entire season. I'm like, yeah. move over, Winona Ryder. I don't care about you. That's my boy now. He really could be. Like, the, the way him. that he... He just feels so passionate about D&D. &D. Well, when I, I was watching that. Stranger Things, my best friend turns to me and goes, that's the kind of mum you're going to be. Like, that's the son that you would have. And I was mm. like, yes. I feel like it's interesting because everyone, I mean, heck, even Dustin. Dustin and his girlfriend. He had a glow up. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a song. We got a song. Wow. Did you watch The Never Ending Story growing up? You know, I did in class. I was not a fan. The Child Empress? It felt like it took Bastion. forever. Bastion. It's never ending. Oh my god, and when our Atreyu dies? The horse gets stuck in the mud? Is that what it is? It's a horse. That's why a lot of people born in the 80s have trust issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Besides that, I was like, yeah, this is pretty fun. Um, like I said, we got, you know, really cool costumes. The fact that it came out right before Comic-Con was pretty great mm. as well. Can I also give a little bit of love to Carrie Elwes? Again, if you're born in the 80s, Princess Bride is probably your favorite movie. As you wish. So seeing him, as you wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My number three has to go to The Mandalorian only because the whole season hasn't come out yet. And I'm only basing this on the episodes that have been out, so I can't give it a number one because what if something goes down and oh. I'm championing a show like Game of Thrones and it just only disappoints everyone in the end. Okay. I 
cried that day. I'm sorry. I cried for a very long I championed it. I was on the ship as it was sinking and I was like, no, it is salvageable. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I drowned in my tears. So yeah, Game of Thrones is not getting an honorable mention at all. Um, I just feel like screaming at it, you were the chosen one! It's a Star Wars reference in oh, a prequel. See, that reminded me of Harry Potter. Revenge I am the, the chosen one. No, Revenge of the Sith, where he's just Obi Wan Kenobi is trying to plead with Anakin. Yeah. Just like, come on, dude, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to help save us all, but you're turning to the dark side. And then he's like, I've got the higher ground, but he jumps anyway and he cuts off his legs and then he burns. Oh yeah. Basically. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what that's... Game of Thrones is to me. That's how you felt. Revenge of the Sith, Anakin demise. Ah. Oh. Anyway, my number three Mandalorian, so far going so well. I am loving Pedro Pascal um, as the Mandalorian here. I have no problem with the helmet staying on. Okay. I think he's doing such a great job um, really portraying who this character is. Man, a few words, but like you get it. You get, you understand everything. And baby freaking Yoda, <gasps> right? I just wanna just give him a nice little hug. Oh my gosh, my heart, my okay. ovaries, all of it. So yeah, that's my number three spot. Number two for you. I would have to say Big Little Lies season two. Mm -hmm. I watched half of season one, but I wanted to read the book first. Oh. Yeah, Australian author. Oh, yeah. Lorraine, Lorraine Moriarty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the cast. I mean, we got them back, but we also got Meryl Streep. Yeah, but Laura Dern. Oh my gosh. And Laura Dern this season, I mean, her character this season, Renata. Oh. 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 Spicy. So good. The f I don't want to give it away if you haven't seen it and if you really do want to watch it, but there are some moments that they will go down in history. I saw I a lot of um, Halloween costumes as well as yeah. the Big Little Lies cast, so that's yeah. got to say something, right? Yeah. My number two is going to Fleabag, and I'm telling you what, it is a hard decision to choose between my number two and number one, but I'm going to put no, uh, Fleabag in number two position because it's only a half hour, it's a much shorter program, and that means it was over quicker, which kind of sucked for me. Okay. Uh, I wanted more of it. Um, I think that they progressed the storyline great. It was so consumable for me. I absolutely love uh, the characters there. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is chef's kiss spectacular. I love what she does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just think the fact that she's in charge of the whole thing is super badass. Yeah. And it was really deserving of the Emmys. But uh, I'll let you know my one, number one and you'll see what I mean. What's your number one? My number one is interesting because it is a 30 minute comedy. Well, it was and now it's gonna be even shorter. Oh. Technically, uh, one day at a time. Yeah, I've never heard of this. What? On Netflix now, it's gonna be on Pop TV. Um, it is based off of the original One Day at a Time by Norman Lear, but now it's brought back with the Cuban family, and it's so good. I have to say that it was a little bit difficult for me to get into it because you have to get used to the laugh track again, and I feel like that would deter you. Uh huh. But don't let it because honestly. Like, growing up in South Texas and then living in Mexico for a bit, this gives me a little taste of home that oh, I didn't okay. know I needed. See? Oh, and it's that's just, sweet. And they pay attention to all the little details and they cover so much in such a short amount of time, which is why that is my number one because okay. it's they not do a lot with a little yeah so my number one um this is the show that i really thought it's season two of this okay. show which was somehow better than season one mind hunter i love true crime but this is um sort of like a fictional take on events that happened in the 80s where oh. in atlanta there were like serial killings of young black boys in the community and yeah, again it's um you know the main character holden ford which yes are two australian car companies or cars sold in australia there's oh. holden's and there's fords i'm familiar with ford we also have holden oh. yeah and it's the fact his name is holden ford and i'm like come on <laughs> and all of australia is here going uh question <laughs> uh, <laughs> But really well done. Jonathan Gross is so amazing in that character. And what's so much better about season two than season one, he broke up with his girlfriend and we don't have to hear from her or see her ever again. She doesn't make an appearance. Thank God she was a wet fish in season one. It was awful and agonizing every time she was in it. I went on Reddit forums about this and I'm not alone. So that was what's really great about season two. And you do get to understand and learn more about it. And it had a little bit more thriller aspect oh, okay. into it as well as you're unveiling one of the other sergeants. Um, I think it's a detective's um, private life with his son who was adopted. Really, really amazing stuff. I absolutely loved it. Can't wait for season three. And they had a Charles Manson in there. So the whole premise of Mindhunter is that they interview serial killers about their behavior to try and help uh, apply that to cases that they're studying to learn more about the mindset of these deranged murderers. 
I mean, that sounds like something that everyone should be watching, like if they love true crime already. I love this show. It's my number one. So now it's time for movies. Let's go number threes. So I'm going to kick this one off because uh, you went first last time. Yes. So Amy and I had a little bit of a powwow because we actually can't rank these in order. No. So they just are in no particular order, mm -hmm. our top three combined. And um, the first one I will share with you is Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah. So that one for me, I absolutely, oh, I enjoyed this movie. Mm -hmm. I love Jake Gyllenhaal as um, supposedly the, the shared hero. And then the twist that takes place there, if you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. Um, this is obviously the straight after Endgame, so it's oh, the God. aftermath of what happened there. I think they handled it well, injected some humor in it, and then made you feel 16 again, taking on the weight of the world. I love Tom Holland. I think that him and Zendaya are really good together. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that this movie was consistently fantastic throughout. Um, so yeah, I think Sony, well done. You actually made a movie that felt like a Marvel movie. Yeah. So We, we actually reviewed it. On Geek Bomb right here. Certainly did. Check it out. Yeah. Um, my third, not like third, but third movie. Yeah, I guess in keeping with Marvel, um, Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. I gosh. cried. Wow. I cried a lot. Probably the most intense feelings I've felt in a movie theater. Um, I've actually only seen it once. I saw it at the same. world premiere and then I had to just kind of bow out because afterwards everyone was like, what did you think? And as soon as I said that, I started tearing up again. Yeah. The, what was your heart wrenching moment for you? What what made you break? Because for me, it was Steve Rogers. Yes, yeah. the exact, and that's the only reason why I cannot make it through the whole film again. But that's why it's because in my, it's, it is in my top three. Yeah, because Okay, so think about this. Okay, we're gonna go to therapy for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Who's charging? <laughs> no, it's free. Yay. For Bono, yay. Um, Steve goes back because he realizes like, okay, well, I need to return these Infinity Stones where they go. And he goes and does the thing that he wished he'd been able to do. His life forked in the road. And the choice yes. was live your best life and feel love. Am I tearing at you? <laughs> Or save the world. He doesn't get to choose that. It was kind of chosen for you have to save the world. See, and and like for me, I also selfless. It it also made me realize, like, you know what, guys? We don't get infinity stones as of right now. We don't have those, you and me. So like we really have to go for whatever we want to do and stop thinking about what people think or like have these hesitations about things. Like, you only get one life. And I don't want to be Steve Rogers' age at the end and been like, I wish I wish and I did that. it differently. Whoa, whoa, and freaking Peggy, and it's so good. I can't listen to the song either. I can't. Um, so thank you, Endgame. Life changing. Thank you. Number two for me, um, I'm going to say Little Women. Yes, I only watched it last night uh, for the first time. This, When I saw the trailer, I was like, ooh, I didn't know that this would be something that I'd be really into, but I'm really into this. Um, before I went in, I had one of my friends say that she'd seen it and she just didn't feel anything for any of the characters. And so I went in thinking that. Within 10 minutes, my eyes turned into love hearts and I'm like, nah, I'm eating this up. <laughs> I'm about this. I love it. Yay. I kept a cry count. Take a stab. Um, how, many how long times was the, I, the movie? I guess pretty standard, but like, and cry is well up and like a bit of breach. Okay, thirty. How dare you? <laughs> Eleven. You have a you have emotions. <laughs> Eleven times during the movie, one time driving home for the movie, and then one time going to bed. So it's technically thirteen total. All right, I was close. <laughs> I mean, there's a three in it, yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I love this movie. It looks fantastic. This, um, The acting is so stellar. There's female gaze happening throughout it. It's so romanticized and wistful and wonderful. There's happy sads. There's sad sads. Great movie. Greta crushed it. And she's got her A-team back again with Timothy, uh, Timothy Chal Chalamet and <laughs> Saoirse Ronan. The yeah. easiest names in Hollywood oh, for to sure. say. Yeah. I cannot spell Saoirse. I've tried. I cannot spell it. Ooh. There's an A in there. S A O I R S E. Probably. Don't even know if that's right. But don't worry, it'll go beep, 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 beep when you spell it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, I love that you talked about Little Women actually, because my number two, not really number well, two. Well, you're a little woman. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> no. 
Okay, my number two would be Midsommar slash Midsummer. And here's the thing. Ari Aster says yeah. both, which is why I'm confused, Ari. Which one is it? Make us choose. Yeah. Just decide for us. Yeah. But um, what's, what's Little Women and uh, Midsommar got in common? Florence Pew. 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 I thought it was like half a purse. <laughs> but there's a G-H. Okay, no. That's a H cough. <laughs> cough. G-H. <gasps> Puff. <gasps> Whoa. But see, it's not even English. Like, in, like American language. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like a name. So this, this year started off with her and fighting with my family. Mm -hmm. Then it was Midsommar. Midsummer. Mm -hmm. Then now Little Women. And then Black Widow. Yeah. I have been a fan of hers since mm, right before Midsummer. <sighs> Midsummer. I could barely get through it. Bear. I read about it. I'll never watch it. I've seen it twice. Gross. I wanted to show it to a friend. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it will haunt you in like the best way possible. Um, Tell my daughter about it. So Midsummer is actually really crazy. Um, yeah. It is very long, I have to say. Really? But it's so intricate and it'll make you feel like I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've ever felt this way leaving a movie theater. Um, and Florence Pugh just does an amazing job. There's this one scene where all of the the Harga, the women, um, the women Harga, they get together and she's she's just crying her eyes mm. out because her boyfriend. Well, you just. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you should see it because there's, there's a lot. Things. There's yeah. And so then they're all crying and they're all crying together. They feel for her. They literally. Sort of, Feel and with her. They're all crying and it's so poetic. And it's just, I don't know. I was not expecting everything that Midsummer gave me and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Never thought I would put it in my top three. No, though, I won't watch like, it. Wow. Cool. And number one for me, it's absolutely Knives Out. Ryan Johnson did an amazing job with this whodunit film. I had a blast the entire way. It's got rewatchability because you ha obviously what you learn at the end, you want to watch at the start and apply through it. Tony Collette's some of the best acting I've ever seen. She's so fun in that. And so is Daniel Craig. He's Benoit Blanc. And it's that's a lot of fun listening to that. And Chris Evans. Eat shit, eat shit. Oh, so good. So that one for me. I feel like what I realized afterwards, it's like, we just needed a movie like this. We haven't really had a whodunit in a long time. Yeah. And that as like a noir like genre in itself was just delightful. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, Ryan Johnson wrote the script 2018, January, and they wrapped shooting by the end of um, December 2018. Wrote the script. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how great wow. is that? So everyone who's like, yeah, but he sucks in Star Wars and what he did with that. The guy's actually quite brilliant. Like, yeah. give him some credit there. That was spectacular. Yeah, it felt really different and not like something we've seen like 12 times. Oh, the soundtrack was great. The symbolism was great. Like, all um, Ensemble cast was great. The script was great. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah, it's actually in my top 10. But um, in, um, I guess, my final pick uh, is going to be Booksmart. Oh yeah, so I actually think this was a funny movie. I really enjoyed it, Yeah. but the people that I watched it with did not like it. And there's actually really polarizing opinions. You either loved it or you loathed it, I feel. Uh, I have actually added it to my top 10, yeah, top 10 of like ever. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, I love the directing, Olivia Wilde, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, the writing is so good, yeah. I loved it. Chemistry between those two, Beanie and... Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yes, I personally identify with Beanie's character, Molly, and I Straight just... A's, but still wanting to have a good time? What? Yeah, yeah. What box has life put you in? Wow, is this therapy? Get in this box. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like, I don't know, it was so good. And I have to say, the soundtrack is by <laughs> far, like, one of my favorite soundtracks ever. It's so good. I love every single song on it. Okay. And she really, Olivia Wilde really took time to put everything together. And I feel like, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I know you're watching. So there are our top threes for film and for television for 2019. What's your top three? Can you get into top three? What uh, honorable mentions do you want to let us know about as well? Thanks so much for watching. 2019 is coming up, uh, you know, to an end. 
for this year. Gig Bomb, Bigger and Better 2020, huge plans, so excited to see them unfold. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really awesome. And a big shout out to our Patreon backers because we would not have a company without you. Your donations make this all possible. So really, really appreciate it to you. You get one, two, two kisses. Oh, four kisses, technically. Oh. Well, now you get them all, <laughs> but they're only for Patreon backers, just letting you know. That's how this works. Um, my dog needs food, so we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for subscribing. More interviews, more geek content coming, so subscribe to that one. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bingo. Bye-bye. That's a new thing I do. What is that? It's from um, Mario Kart 64. Oh. When she hits someone with a shell. Bingo. Bye-bye. Bingo. Bye-bye.